Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to another Hontai Star session. And yes, we are back. We are back to continue the version 2.1 story content with Topaz now in the area. <laughs> um, a little bit of a recap on my part. So, from what I remember from last time I streamed, right? Um, there was this whole thing of adventuring in Dewlight Pavilion. Oh, also, by the way, um, I'm just missing two chests right now in Dewlight Pavilion. I think the two chests are in, uh, in this area here with the origami bird. So, I'll get to check it out later, I suppose. But yeah, um, we were, last time, within the perspective, or the point of view, I should say, of a Van Turing. And, yeah, he was with Dr. Ratio. We traveled across the Dulite Pavilion, only to seek an audience with, um, with dear uh, Sunday, right? But unfortunately, Dr. Ratio betrayed the Venturine and to told Sunday about what was going to happen with uh, this whole shebang regarding um, the cornerstones. And apparently there are ten cornerstones and one was given to, I mean, one was uh, with Topaz, I mean, was supposed to be with Topaz, but eventually had it. And he exchanged this cornerstone with the family when he first entered Pinnacone, right? Uh, but Dr. Ratio already knew about that, apparently. And he knew that eventually would be a gambler to his last, <laughs> to his last wit. So he wanted to see if his intuitions were right, right? So Venturing took a bet and he put his own cornstone inside a bag of, uh, of money, I suppose, of jewels. And he he hid it there to make sure that Sunday wouldn't find it and to perhaps escape with this bag of um, of jewels aka where his cornerstone is but Sunday was already a step ahead and to confirm his doubts I mean to confirm uh, the doubts that Sunday had he used, well, uh, some sort of uh, power from the harmony in order to make Aventurine say the truth. But then with that, Aventurine was able to discard some of his, uh, I should say, uh, ideas in order to permute some of his answers some way but Sunday had it all figured out and he told the Venturine that there was only going to be 17 system hours left for him and in this and within this these 17 system hours he would he would like to Venturine to see if uh, he gets the same results when it comes to the, the investigations regarding these murders that are happening uh, in Penetroni or in the dreamscape, right? To see if the correlated, uh, well, clues or evidence are right from Aventuring side and also from Sunday side. But yeah, uh, it seems like Aventuring has been stripped of his freedom and we had this uh, cool looking uh, flashback or backstory 
I suppose, uh, from a Venturine side. And his real name, apparently, is not Venturine, but Travisha. And he had a sister, a big sister, right? And um, he had to... Uh, he wanted to, to, to be free. Uh, they were worshipping... Uh, Dryathra Dry Triclops, right? And <laughs> yeah, also, yeah, there was also this whole thing with um, the city sand pit where Aventurian <laughs> uh, said that famous line, Doctor, you're huge! <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that, that's crazy. But yeah, um, so ratio the ratio betrayed the Venturine. The Venturine has 17 system hours remaining in order to find to find clues or evidence about the murder mysteries uh, to see if it correlates with what Sunday has found. Um, and now, now, Topaz is in the picture. And it's funny how she's in the picture, since her own cornerstone is uh, has been <laughs> put into view by a Sunday and Doctor Ratio. And it's funny how she doesn't know that her specific cornerstone, which is a topaz, is not in her position. But maybe she give it to to Venturine. For him to get to the truth of what resides within Panacronia, or how, or how the family, well, works when it comes to, well, the, the seething uh, part of the true dreamscape, slowly being uh, combined with the dreamscape that we see, not here obviously, but in the golden hour or the dream's edge right so yeah it has to be seen but yet again i'll have to find out what the clues or what information i'll be able to gather today based on based on what we're going to talk about with topaz and the ipc corp and uh the, the bloodhound family because they are here Right, and also we're we've changed perspectives. Well, right now, going back to the Astral Express crew, seeking answers. But yeah, um, if you are on the side of YouTube, then make sure to leave a like on the video, or on the videos that we uploaded to YouTube in due fashion, and also you know. Uh, subscribe if you're brand new, uh, activate the notification bell, and uh, yeah, turn over at twitch.tv forward slash for wrestling where I do all of my, well, Hauntai Star Rail stream gameplay sessions, and I'm currently in version 2.1 story content, so I still have uh, version 2.2 and 2.3 to look forward to, and, and I have some suspicions that there will be some more bangers. Also, um, I don't want to. S I don't want to be someone who is a hypocrite uh, when it comes to not knowing anything. I mean, I saw. I saw the wishes, right? And I know now. Unfortunately, I wanted. I wanted to know now that that via via the story, but. I know that Firefly is Sam, or at least it's supposed to be. I don't know. Because uh, Welt mentioned that uh, the Moth's dynasty, or I don't know, something like that. Like, Sam, Sam is a knight, a tall silver armored knight, and a. Uh, there's Firefly in the foreground, so... Is that like... Uh, 
another personality, or is that like a suit of armor that Firefly has and that she can pull off whenever she wants? I don't know. I just will find out. But yeah, I was I was uh, spoiled about that, so now I know. But hey, um, I'm sure that I'll get some more answers about it. No way, she's here. I have to talk to I have to talk to her. But yeah, um, it doesn't it doesn't mean that if I mean from what I know. Uh, I haven't seen Firefly change into that suit of armor or, or becoming Sam or whatever, so I look forward to, to see how this all develops into how Sam is Firefly and vice versa. So yeah, without further ado guys, because I don't want to keep you hanging any longer, it's time to go back to it but first. Let me talk to the Emperor, right? It's been some time now. <laughs> Greetings, noble one. Uh, dear Dream Chaser, the late Emperor's left Penetroni. I, Tizosius the Third, will inherit the throne and carry on the duties of the late Emperor. Yeah. So we s we learned about that from the message that she sent to everyone in the Golden Hour. Uh, regarding the succession. If you are in need of help or uh, in any kind of trouble, feel free to approach me. It is my duty and honor to serve my subjects. Uh, do you know what kind of amp or person is the late emperor like? What's your relationship with the late emperor? Yeah, this one. That's not important, my dear subject. What matters most is what kind of emperor I am, right? Uh, I am an emperor who is dedicated to the happiness of her subjects. In any case, whatever you need, feel free to discuss it with me. Uh, I want to have a child with you, yeah. No problem. It's the emperor's duty to communicate with her subjects. Uh, the late emperor was apparently a tyrant, right? Yes, yes, yes. I know she was a tyrant, and many have died by her hands. Yeah, um, I did a recap. It is on. It is on the my my YouTube channel, right? I did a recap, uh, detailing all that happened with the four clocky tuning quests between version 2.0 and version 2.1, and of course there was a uh, was this specific clutching to quest with uh, the Emperor right and I told I I told you guys from a recap that I made that yeah sh the Tiso sh sh uh, tis sick I don't know the second was a tyrant in uh, the real world in her empire and yeah sh many died by her hand as she's um, as she's mentioned right now so she had to pay for her crimes. She had to be punished. And so the session began. Let's just hope that this one uh, is, I mean, understands the real signification of, or the real meaning around what happened with the late emperor and how she's going to overcome any, let's just say, backlash? Because, you know, it seeps into your, well, your whole succession and stays with you, knowing that the one that you're sitting is tyrant, basically. But also, the vinyl in the background, the thing in the middle, in the middle, Almost looks like a poker ball, but even in any case, um, more than one subject has brought this issue up to me. I'm fully aware. So, what if she was a tyrant? The good deeds she accomplished cannot be overshadowed by the wrongs she committed. Just as the 
evil certificate to not tarnish the good that she has done. I will continue her legacy of kindness till the day I die. And that's important. Why do you want to inherit the throne? Because this is Pinnacone, the greatest money pit in the cosmos. Okay, well, I mean, I mean, sure. It is full of evil, greed, and betrayal. If the remaining kindness here is not inherited, it will soon disappear. It will be neglected, forgotten, and trampled on by people. Hence, I must become the next emperor to ensure that kindness will endure. I don't have any other questions. Sure. If you encounter any troubles, remember to come to me anytime. It gives me untold happiness to dispel any troubles for my subjects. Alright, so. I know this is, this is optional, right? But uh, I want to talk to Topaz. 